Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a scatter plot in Google Sheets. Uh, you'll notice I already have this spreadsheet opened up. I have some fake sample data already typed in and ready to graph. Um, before we make the scatter plot itself, it's worth taking a look at the data and the way that it's been entered. Um, whatever you type into the very first column of your data set, in this case, um, it's, for me it's months of the school year, one would represent September uh, and so forth. Uh, the the scatter plot would all, will automatically make into the x-axis. And if you know that ahead of time, uh, it's going to make your uh, graph creation that much easier. Uh, whatever columns you put after that, in this case I have three different sets of data, uh, will automatically be graphed along the y-axis. Um, you'll also notice that I have three of them. That's the beautiful part about a scatter plot, is you can have a graph as many points along the y-axis as you need for every one point along the x could have as many as one uh, up to I mean, theoretically as many as you need. So once you have all your data entered, um, you're ready to create the graph. You simply highlight all the columns at, in one, at one time, go up to the insert chart button, click, chart types, and scroll down to the bottom where you'll see scatter plot as an option. And off to the right hand side it generates the scatter plot for you. So as it is right now, the scatter plot actually looks pretty good. Um, it's got each of my y-axis y -axis data sets labeled in a different color, which is nice. There's probably still some customization you want to do to this. Um, as you scroll down, you can edit the title, the legend, um, label the different axes. It, it already automatically put in the uh, units for my x, but it didn't label the y, so you probably want to label that uh, axis with some units. Um, another interesting feature that you can do with this type of graph is edit the minimum and maximum value along each axis. What that means is if I didn't want data points at the very edge of the graph at 10, um, all you do is come up here and so make sure horizontal axis is selected and set the maximum instead of 10, maybe set it to 12. And then it bumps that graph out a little bit so you have some space at the end. Um, if you come down further, uh, you can edit the grid lines. Right now it's showing only the major grid lines every five spaces. You could change that if you want it to look a little bit more detailed. Uh, coming down uh, further, you can edit the data series. If you don't like red color for your average science test, simply select it and change the color to whatever you want. Maybe change it to green. Um, you can change the size and the shape of the data points. Maybe make each Maybe make science tests a square instead of a circle if you think that's easier to view. And then finally, way at the bottom, uh, probably most helpful for a scatter plot is the option to add in a trend line. Uh, remember with a scatter plot, the purpose is usually to see if there's some kind of a correlation or a relationship between the variables you're plotting on the x and y axes. And a trend line can help show you that. If you select it, there's three options, uh, linear, exponential, and polynomial. Um, if you think it might be a linear, uh, a linear relationship between the two, you select that option. Um, it, it gives a label. Sometimes it's a little bit long. I'm going to change that to simply trend line. Um, it can also show you the R squared value for that line, which is very helpful. Uh, the R squared value, if you don't know much about it, its purpose is to tell you how well this straight line uh, fits these particular data points, in this case my science test data points. Uh, the way it works is the closer the R squared value is to 1, the better fit that line is. So 0.649 isn't that close to 1, so those points could be linear but probably not. Um, and if you want to compare that to the other ones, you can then try the history test scores. Click to add a linear trend line as well simplify the label for that line and show that R squared value and you can see the history test R squared value is 0.885 now that's really close to 1 so that means the history test scores are showing a linear relationship or at least closer to uh, a linear relationship uh, than the science test scores were and then of course once you're all finished simply click insert and it automatically creates that graph as always, if you want to keep editing, uh, make sure you're in quick edit mode. Right-click the chart area, and you can always go back and adjust any of the things we just edited. And finally, clicking the drop-down arrow in the top right lets you save this chart as an image or copy it into a Google 
document or any other Google form you need to use.